Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today's project is probably a little bit too simple for a video, but I've been asked many times to make this, so that's what you're getting today. We're going to make a storage caddy to fit on the side of a bed. If you've got a mattress sitting on top of a mattress, you can actually slide your storage caddy in between the mattresses and have a couple of pockets there for books and remote controls and all those sorts of things that you might need. Even if you have a, a bed base and your mattress sitting on the top of that, you'll be able to use that there as well. Hang around and I'll show you how to make this storage caddy for the side of your bed. I'm not even going to be very adventurous with fabric today. I'm going to use one color only, two pieces of fabric, and this is an upholstery fabric. So the width of the upholstery fabric is 60 inches. I'm going to use the entire width of that and it's 20 inches wide. So we need two pieces of fabric that are 60 inches across the fabric and 20 inches. Uh, if you don't have fabric that's long enough, you can just join a couple of pieces together until you've got your 60 inches or meter and a half and then make sure you've got enough for about 20 inches. There's no hard and fast rule as to the width that you need to make this. If you've got really big books you want to put in here or lots of remotes or pockets that you want to do, you can make this a little bit wider. You can even make it a little bit smaller. But 60 inches is a good length to start with. That'll allow for enough area to slide it underneath your mattress. Okay, all we need to do is take the fabric and place it right side together. So if you just line up your fabric and pin it together all the way around. Now I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance today. I've got two layers of upholstery fabric and I just want to make sure that my seams, when I turn this the right way around, have plenty of fold underneath to be able to close it up. I might just mention too, I haven't used this, I'm not using any stabilizer on this because I'm using upholstery fabric and it's quite thick. I don't think that I need to use any and we'll be stitching and folding this together shortly so it'll give me lots of stability. If you're using quilting cotton or something a little bit lighter weight, get yourself some pallen or some kind of batting and stabilize it with that. Even a dressmaker's interfacing will be enough stability. You just want something to take away the floppiness from your fabric. Okay, the whole lot's been pinned together. On the long side, I'm going to leave an opening of about eight to 10 inches or so. I'll start with a back stitch here, sew all the way around, come back to here, back stitch, and then we can turn the whole lot through to the right side and we can close it up and top stitch. It really doesn't matter where about you start along here, just make it comfortable for yourself. Before we turn this the right way around, we just want to trim the corners. And we can find our opening turn it the right way around, poke out all the corners and then we'll take it back to the machine and top stitch. I've gone and clipped this all the way around all of the edges just to help keep it in place. Because it's such a lengthy piece of fabric it has a tendency to shift so this will just make it easier to keep it all in place. This is where the opening is here. I'm going to start around this side, go all the way around and do that top stitch. So from the bottom I've measured up 19 inches. I've placed some pins just along this edge here. We're going to fold the fabric right on those pins, line up the edges so that they're nice and even and just flatten out this folded edge. And this is where we're going to put a fold over ribbon or binding. You can use a bias binding and fold that over the top and stitch it in place. I'm going to use this piece of ribbon. It's a nice contrast here. 
I've folded this ribbon in half. This ribbon is only about a one and a quarter inches wide. So what I've done here is I folded the ribbon slightly off center like this. So this top layer here is about one or two millimeters shorter than the layer behind. And the reason I'm doing that, I want to sew this down in one go. And I'm going to sew obviously from the top. The top will be the shortest side and this is the back. And when we stitch along here, oftentimes we don't catch the fabric at the back. By off-centering this piece of ribbon all the way along, just by that much, when I come along and sew the top layer, it will automatically go and catch the back layer. So I'll just reposition these pins to keep that fold in place. And I've got the shortest section of my fabric underneath. This here will become the back of our fabric. So we want the widest section of the ribbon to be on the back. Place that underneath on the fold and make sure you've got some ribbon extending on either side. Fold the edge under. So this will be the inside or the back of the fabric. And we're going to fold the ribbon under and then fold it over and clip it in place. And then it's just a matter of lining this up all the way along the edge there. And when you get to the other end, you'll do the same thing. Fold the end over and then fold that and clip it. When we stitch this, we're actually going to stitch from the side that's got the shortest edge. So this will become our outside or the front of the pocket. And we're going to sew along here. So we just want to double check that we're going to catch all the layers. Grab a pin and poke it in on the edge of the fab, uh, ribbon there and bring it across to the other side. So you can see the pin here, the pin is actually coming out, has actually come out underneath this ribbon. And that's good because we're actually going to be sewing from this side. If we're stitching along the edge here, our ribbon ends on the other side, ends all the way down here, and that's going to catch that entire layer of ribbon. Before we sew this one, grab this end at the bottom. So we've got the bottom here and 19 inches up, and then we've got the rest all the way along here. We're not going to do anything with this. We're going to do the same on this end here. I folded my ribbon again and I've got the short side on here and the longer width along here. I'm going to place the longer section to the top. And again, where I said this here is the inside and that is the outside, along here this is the inside and that is the outside. And that'll all make sense in a minute. Place your fabric down over your ribbon and we'll attach that in the same way. Once you've attached the bottom section, double check that as well. This side here, we want with the wider band, poke your pin in. And if your pin comes out underneath the ribbon, then that's perfect because we're stitching from this side. So let's take this to the machine now and we will stitch along this side here and then we will stitch along this side here and close up that fold and just decorate that with a little bit of ribbon. This is purely optional. The only reason I'm doing this is because I've got such an ugly bland looking fabric. I want to dress it up a little bit. If you've got something nice that you're using, you don't have to do this at all. And you can see already how the pockets are going to look. So we've got one section of pockets here and another section of pockets here. Let's go and sew that together. So remember to start with the edge that's going to be facing the outside. We'll do a back stitch at the beginning and the end and then just sew that ribbon in place. So there's the ribbon from the front and on the back it's caught everything perfectly. Repeat this for the next one. Okay, we've done both edges here and what we can do is turn this around so we've got the short edge facing us, bring all the fabric to the back and we've got our 19 inch fold along here and we've got our little edge along here. Okay, this is going to be the front of our pocket. I've folded the flap up to eight inches and the rest of the fabric is well out of the way. 
We're going to make a couple of pockets in here and one of them is going to be for our remote control. So depends on what kind of things you're going to be putting into your little dividers. You might want to put a remote there, you might have the remote for your air conditioner as well and you might want to put a little pocket book or some pens. So at this point here it's completely up to you how many pockets you want to have. I would allow plenty of room for your remote so if you're going to stick that in there for example we're going to have this side edge stitched down shortly and we want to stitch this down as well so we don't want to have a really small pocket because it'll make it too tight to get the remote in and out. Allow plenty of space and I think around about here looks good to me because then I can get the remote in and out easily it's not going to fall all over the place um, and it'll just make it really comfortable to get things in and out. This section here I'm going to leave open for maybe a smaller book, a little notebook, um, crossword book or something. Take a measurement, I'll pop a clip in here, this is going to be my stitching line down here. I'll remove that and measure the distance from the outside edge. That's seven and a half inches, so I want a stitching line seven and a half inches from the outside edge. There's my seven and a half inch line. I'm going to take this straight to the machine and sew right at the very top there. I'm going to triple stitch over the top, sew down there, come all the way down and then I'm going to go and stitch it again. And the reason for that is that it's upholstery fabric. There's a fair bit of thickness in there. Even when you're doing this and you've got pallen inside, there's still going to be a fair bit of thickness in there. It'll just help prevent the stitches from unraveling. I'll go and do that quickly now. I'm not going to do the sides just yet because we'll do that when we finish the rest of it. Okay, so this section has been sewn down. We've got a pocket for our remote and we've got a pocket for something else in here. You might put your reading glasses in here, in which case you might want another narrow channel there and have one for your reading glasses and one for some pens. Let's fold this section up. The section where you fold the second pocket up is going to be dependent on the height of your bed from the floor and also on the amount of fabric that you have left here. So there's plenty of fabric here to be able to fit this underneath the mattress and then your pockets will hang down like this. So you want to make sure that this isn't going to sit on the floor. So it's at this point when you start placing this fold down, you want to check it against your bed before you go and sew the sides down. You also want to see how deep you want it for a book. So a little bit of light reading for me will be <laughs> this and I'll place that book inside the cover there and determine whether or not I want to have a deeper pocket to hold the book in place more like that or if I want to have a shallower pocket. But I think something like that is about right. So this is where I'm going to place my pocket and the measurement for me, which will still allow plenty of room for this to sit under the mattress, the measurement for the next fold will be nine inches. So if you just move this out of the way, you can see that I have folded this up and it's up to nine inches. From the top of the ribbon here down to the fold, I've got a nine inch depth and I'll mark that with a clip or a pin. And it's at this point you can put all the layers together. Check you've got nine inches on the other side as well. Now before we go any further, you'll notice that I haven't put any channels in here. So if you want to add another pocket in here, then you're going to need to do that before you secure the side seams. And if you do want to do that, move this layer of fabric out of the way and sew your channel all the way down to the bottom like that, wherever it is you actually want it. Okay. Now it's time to take this back to the machine and sew down these two side edges and then our project is completely finished. I've got a lot of thickness in this here so I'm not going to stitch right on the very edge. I'm going to come in just a little bit so that it's comfortable enough for my machine to, do, to cope with the thickness of the stitching. If you're using regular quilting cotton it'll be a lot easier for you but with uh, thick fabric like this there's a fair bit of bulk. Let's take it to the machine and sew down there and here and fit it to the bed. I'm going to start at the bottom edge so as not to shock my machine with so much thickness. It handles it but you know I'm always cautious.
when I come up to this section where the ribbon is or where the uh, opening is, I'm going to back stitch there. That's one side finished and we'll now do the other. So there we have it, a very simplified version of a bedside storage caddy. Let's go check this out on the bed. And there we have it. It's tucked in nicely underneath the mattress. Hopefully you can't see any dust underneath the bed. But the storage caddy is sitting just off the floor there. Plenty of room. You've got your remote control in there. Book in here or your glasses. And there's plenty of room there for a nice big heavy book or even a bunch of magazines. That's sitting between a mattress with a bed base. We'll see how it looks on the other bed. So in the other room, it's sitting between a mattress and a base. There's still plenty of air space underneath the pockets for all the dust to collect. There we have it. A very simplified version of a bedside storage caddy. Plenty of room along the top here. There's heaps of room in this section here for you to be able to fold that underneath your mattress and as you've seen it works equally well when you have a mattress and base or whether you use the mattress and your bed frame. There's quite a lot of weight in this so the upholstery fabric is really going to hold together well in here and the addition of the contrast ribbon here has just made a really bland fabric look a little bit better. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.